Hello, hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday. I'm Kim Boltzma, in case you don't know. Um, today marks the first day of the Coffee Break Live. That's our hashtag, the Coffee Break Live. And this is the show where we grab a cup of our favorite coffee or tea or whatever it is you're drinking at 11.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. Here's mine. The coffee is making me awesome. <laughs> Vanessa, hello, Tokyo. Yes. So, yes. So, whatever you're drinking today, grab a hold of it, and we're going to have an awesome discussion. Um, this show is, I'm kind of launching the show, so this is the first time we're doing this. Um, so, the Coffee Break Live is going to be a show where we take a moment to look at the messy world of content development, because, boy, is it ever messy, right? Hmm need that good coffee to get us going today. So today, I'm going to be talking about the direction that you need to consider going with your content in 2017. Now, I'm many some of the people out there might know, but I'm kind of fresh back from social media marketing world and if you get a chance, I would highly recommend going if this is something that you're really interested in. Um, I had I learned so much. I I loved it so much that I'm going to go back next year already just so I can bring back a lot of that fantastic knowledge and content to share with my members over at a cup of content.com. And just a little kind of a preview here, the the Coffee Break Live is actually going to be brought to you by members of a cup of content. Um, they are an online community of service-based small businesses who collectively learn how to develop their own content to grow their business. Um, we have monthly challenges, um, we have on-demand courses, we have live workshops, we have live tr training just for members only. So what you're seeing today is what we're doing on the outside, the public side. We do a whole different set of content for people on the inside. It's way more geared towards um, specifically their businesses. I'm, you know, we're at a point where I can still talk about each of um, each of their businesses and things like that. So um and these people all believe in the community so much that they have they offer a free 14-day trial. You don't have to put a credit card in or anything. You get full 100% access to a cup of content. And so what you need to do is simply head on over to a cupofcontent.com slash live trial. And I'm going to put that over in the comments here com slash live trial. And you can do that and you can get um, I'm gonna highlight that puppy. I gotta remember how I do this. Create an overlay. We're gonna get this down yet. I'm gonna move it over here so you can kind of see it. Okay. So there we go. It's gonna cover my head for a moment, but a cup of content.com slash live trial, and that's where you can try out a cup of content for free. No credit card required. All right, so let's get started. Um, I encourage you guys to comment, ask questions throughout today's show too, okay? So this is totally interactive. Other than, you know, the ideas that I've got. And I'm not sure why Vanessa is laughing at my 2018. This is silly. Did I say 2017? I might have. I'm still, clearly it's what, halfway through March and I'm still thinking last year. But we're going to talk about rethinking content in 2018. And this is actually going to be um, the first uh, part in a four-part series that I'm going to be doing on this topic. So for the next four weeks, we're going to be talking about different elements of how you should be rethinking your content in 2018. So, and if you, um, if you'll head over to, you know, when we're done, a cup of content.com slash blog, you'll see that we just posted a blog post about this topic this week too. We're going to have four more coming up in the next couple of weeks. And, um, we're going to be talking about this. I've got some really great theories and really good things that I've been starting to apply, not only in some of my clients, um, websites, but in, I'm starting to work on, on my own too. So you can see that blog post again over at a cup of content.com slash blog. Now today we're going to be talking about something that I'm going to be referring to as disruptive content. And um, the word disruptive content is new in the world of marketing. And I think that's incredibly important to content. Okay. And there's been a lot of talk about this. So, you know, you, I, when I was at social media marketing world, some people were talking about disruptive, like how do we create disruptive advertising? And I think it's really important to think about it in terms of content. Now, a lot of us and a lot of you might be thinking, well, that word disruptive, isn't that kind of bad, <laughs> right? Like, um, is it, 
does it mean troublesome or unruly or all that kind of jazz? And you're right, there is that element of it. You know, you have a disruptive child in a classroom. I know I used to teach. And, but what I want to think about is the other definition of disruptive, which really means something that is um, innovative or groundbreaking. And that's what I'm seeing as the direction that content needs to go in 2018. Now, we've been told for a long time that we need to think about the pain points of our potential customers and clients. Have you guys heard that? Shoot me a message over in the clients if you've heard that. And I'm, I know, I've actually talked about it with my members in a cup of content, but it, it's totally still relevant. So I'm not saying it's a bad thing. But I think we've been thinking about those pain points in the wrong way. I think we need to change our thinking about that because what we've been doing is we, you know, with a pain point, we're like, okay, what's, what's wrong with them and how can I help them fix it, right? Which is the right thing to think about. But when we start to develop our content and aim it towards that audience, we start to like how, how we're a hero, right? And this is a lot about story, okay? So what I've been talking about inside of membership and I want to talk to you guys a little bit too about is like, what is your story? What is your business's story? And how do we tell that story, right? Every, we've, every marketer out there is going to tell you that. And I totally agree with it. However, I think we need to tell it a little bit differently. So let's get to that. I think what's been wrong with marketing lately is that businesses are really caught up in how great they are, right? Because when we start to talk about our clients and customers' pain points, um, we start to say, well, you know, you guys are feeling this way, but now, you know, my business is the hero and we're here to make your your pain points better. You know, you, we are the hero. It's our story. We're going to pull you into our story. And that's all fine and dandy, but we what we're kind of forgetting is that those dream clients, those those um, those customers and those clients of ours don't have the same story we do. And this is where it's going to get really tricky, right? Because we've always been thinking, what's our story and how are we going to share it with our audience? So what we have to remember is when we are marketing our business with content, we're develop any sort of content about our business. We have to remember it's not about us. You know that whole thing? It's not you, it's me. And that kind of is the problem. If you think about it, for the last 20, or okay, let me say that again. Um, if you think about it, um, I, I'm, I, I look at a lot of websites and I see like, okay, our combined 50 years of experience in blah, 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 or we've been working to, you know, with, we have a combined experience of 84 years. Okay, that's great. That's great that you guys know what you're doing, but it doesn't really matter to me, <laughs> right? Like, you know, or we've won best of Omaha or whatever it is that you, you know, some that's what they have here in Omaha is they have like, okay, you can be best of Omaha, which is great, but what does that have to do with your, your product or service and how that can help your dream client have a better life? Because ultimately with story, and when we have to think about this with our, um, with our, with our membership or with our, sorry, with our business is that we can't make the story about us. We have to remember that there's all those other people out there that have their own stories and we, and we need to start thinking about how we can make our services and products fit into their lives. Does that make sense? So we're trying to fit into their story. So we have to really start thinking a little bit differently. We got to think about Okay, so if I'm aiming a cup of content towards people who are in a service-based industry like photographers and bloggers and nonprofits and things like that, then I have to remember that they're not me. They're not, you know, they're not a cup of content, which is a membership. They are a real life business that can use the things that I offer in order to make their lives a lot easier and a lot better. And so that's where I'm even developing, redeveloping my own story is that I have my story, but I have to think about how what I offer fits into my clients' lives. And how we need to think about that is we need to remember it's not about us. Um, oh, and how do you set the, how do you get the set reminder? Sorry, I just saw what Chris um Chris had asked a question. I don't know why mine is showing up so dark. Let me see if I can edit this real quick. 
I think it's because we got, let me try that. There we go. Ha, now you can see it, right? We're moving up here. Okay, so Chris was wondering how I set the reminder, like the set reminder button on my live. I am using what's called eCamm, E-C-A-M-M. -M, and let me put it in the comments. I think it's eCamm.com. Um, but it's a live streaming platform, costs right around, I think, 40 bucks. And um, th that's how I do it. I can actually schedule my Facebook Lives through that um, platform. It's like a one-time fee. And you just pay it, and it gives you all this great stuff where I could, I've got this overlay. If I wanted to, I could go back into my intro overlay. Like, I can do all sorts of stuff. I can even show you what my desktop looks like, which don't judge me, but you'll see me down in the corner, and you can see that I've got some notes up here as to what I'm going to be talking about. So that's how you do that, Chris. Great question. Um, okay, so back to what I was saying about um, about your dream client. So what we've been doing for so long is we've been pretending like we're the hero. It's all about us. We're the hero. We're going to make your lives better. We're going to fix you. That does not place ourselves into their story. It forces our dream clients to be pulled into our own story, if that makes sense. So um, what we would, what we need to do is we need to start writing with you. Remember that second person? Now I know, I used to be a um, high school English teacher and I taught college too. And that was the big no-no in traditional, you know, five paragraph essay writing is don't use second person. Okay, forget all that because that totally does not matter anymore. And actually, it's really important to use second person because, you know, you have to kind of go with this like we get you. We totally feel you. We understand where you're going, you know, and I'm thinking like Chris and Vanessa, those guys who are here and anybody else. Oh, Cindy's there, too. Um, but Cindy, yeah, the same way with the logo. I can I have overlays where I can turn those things on and off. And um, like I can turn off Chris's comment too. So it's all part of Ecamm. But um, back to the you part. So, you know, if we can, or I, I know I was going to say, I was going to talk about Chris and Vanessa because they're with a nonprofit in Omaha called Playing With Fire. And, um, you know, what, they, what they're what they starting to do is they're starting, they're doing such cool things. They're like getting people to try and guess, giving them clues as to who's going to be playing this summer at their concerts, which I know because I'm on the backside and I get to see all that cool stuff, but I can't share it with you. You should have, head over to Playing With Fire um, on Facebook and follow them and sign up for the email list and you can get in on that kind of fun stuff that's going on there. But what they're doing is they're taking their story and they're they're putting it in so that their um, followers, the people who are their fans, can kind of start to play a role in it and feel like they are part of the story. Does that make sense? So it's like, you know, it's it's how you talk to your clients and customers using the word you. And it's it's going to feel weird, but think about it. Like, you're probably way more apt to respond better to a business who, to, who speaks directly to you, right? Okay, so that's kind of what, you know, I'm going for too, is like, you know, how can I speak to these people? Um, how can I talk to them? And how can I make them feel comfortable with me? So that's like one way that we can do this, is start using the word you, Y-O-U, in your marketing me messages. And then one other thing I want to talk about today too is, um, I'm just making sure I'm looking at my notes and at the comments. Please be asking questions. These are great questions. Um, the other thing I want to talk to you about is features versus benefits. And I think that's a very important um, thing that we need to consider and know the difference between, right? Because, you know, put throw up in the comments, what do you guys think is the difference between features and benefits? Because it's tough, right? Because we know what the features are. Like I could sit here and tell you all day what the features are of a cup of content. You get monthly access to on-demand courses, right? This is a feature. You get um, a live training with me once a month. You get to come to the workshops in Omaha if you're here for free with your membership. You get a monthly new content every month, right? Which right now we're, we've been doing challenges and I think that's the most effective. It seems like everyone's liking that. So does that make sense? Like those are all features of my membership, okay? Now, <laughs> that's great, but I have to start thinking like my dream clients out there. How do I get 
them to see the benefits of those features. Does that make sense? Like I know Cindy's on here and she is at Great Vibrations Fitness. It's a gym here in Omaha. And um, she, you know, she could talk about all the features. They get, they get this with their membership and they get to make, you know, they get, um, they get to have, I think, what is it like only so many people, eight people per session. So it's very small. It's very close knit. Okay. So, so what are the benefits of that? They get kind of one-on-one. -on -one. They don't have to walk into a gym and not know what, how to use the equipment. There is someone there telling them what to do. So therefore they're right. So that, that's, a, that's a benefit is like, I don't have to be scared to go to the gym because someone's going to tell me what to do. And there's only a couple other people there. So that's not quite as scary as walking into this giant gym and not knowing anybody or how to use the machines, if that makes sense. So those are the things that we need to think about with our stories. Like how do we, how do we show the benefits to our dream clients? Like how, cause that's how they can really connect with your product or service, right? And, um, the other thing I was going to say about that, I just thought of it and I hope it didn't escape me. Oh, okay. Um, so we're talking about the you, right? Using you and your marketing messages and how we are always the hero. Okay. Instead of thinking that we are the hero in our dream client story, why don't we think that our dream clients themselves are the hero, right? And what does every hero need? I'm taking this out of a page. You can tell I'm an English teacher. I used to teach mythology. Um, <laughs> but Joseph Campbell, um, he has this book called The Hero with a Thousand Faces. Now, it's a super thick book and probably not anything you would want to read. But I'm going to take this out of his, his uh, notes. Is um, every hero needs a guide. They need a guide. How can we as businesses or as nonprofits or whatever be a guide in our clients and customers lives. Does that make sense? Like, so now it just becomes like, okay, think of it like, um, you and your dream client are driving along in the car. Do, do, do. I wish I had a picture of some, oh, I do. I have a picture of Mallory. Okay, here we go. So me, so Mallory's my dream client and we're driving along in the car. Now let's take a second here. I am the business and she is my dream client. So I can either um, drive and I can put her in the back seat, right? I can drive. I can do everything for my client and they're going to sit back here and kind of watch. They're just along for the ride. Okay. Or I can invite my dream client into the front seat and I can let them drive. Okay. I can let them drive and then I can be riding shotgun. So they're doing the work. I'm just giving them advice, right? So does that make sense? Like, I think that the car, you know, think of it like you're driving. So your, your potential customers and clients are the ones that are driving and you're just there guiding them. You're just there to give them some little help and support or whatever it is with your service or product that you offer. Like, how does that make their lives better, less stressful? It, it, it solves their problems. You see how we still have that pain point thing, but we kind of flip it on its head a little bit. It's not like, oh, you need me. I'm going to totally fix everything. No, we need them to do the work, right? But we're just going to guide them through it. I hope that makes sense. So that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today. That's all I got for you. It's been about 20 minutes. So I, I said I wasn't going to go longer than 30 because those of you know, who know me, um, I can talk a lot and I have no problem with it. <laughs> and I'm hoping that you're sipping on your coffee or whatever beverage it is that you're enjoying today. So um, let's do a recap here. So we talked about um, disruptive content. So how do we create innovative content that disrupts what the norm has been? What have we been doing all the time that's really not working that well anymore? And a lot of people still aren't doing this. I'm watching websites, um, seeing people launch new websites, and they're not, they're, they're still like, I've got 20 years of service. I'm so awesome. But they're not really like talking about like how, you know, what is wrong? What is wrong with people and how, how can we guide them into a path of correctness, if that makes sense? Um, so we're talking about remembering it's not all about you. 
we're talking about using you in your marketing message. And that doesn't mean like you yourself as a business, but you, the client, okay? That we can talk to them, we can create a, a communication with them. And then we also have, we talked about benefits versus features. It's great to list what your features are, but your blog posts and the rest of your marketing messages really should be about the benefits because that is your selling point, right? The benefits are the selling point. They're, people aren't buying the product, they're buying the outcome, right? Think of it like this. Okay, P90X, right? Okay, so people are buying a DVD ultimately, but really are they buying a DVD? No, they're buying the results of that DVD, right? Think about like, you know, I was trying to make a correlation with Oprah the other day because Oprah is like now like on the Weight Watchers person. And um, if you go look at their website, she like how they have that, how they talk about it. I think I have that in my blog post. Did I refer about Oh man, that or it's coming up in one of them. But talking about how like Oprah is, you know, saying, oh, it's it's so easy, I, you know, and they provide all the shopping lists for you and all this stuff. Like, it's like in a box. It's like you're, you're solving the problems of your clients and customers by providing them with something that makes their lives better. And that's really kind of what the core of what our message, we need to rethink our messages to be. So, um, that's what I got for you. Unless you guys want to throw some more comments over there. These are all fantastic comments. Um, I, I hope I answered at least all those questions. But like I said, I'm using Ecamm today. And Ecamm, again, is um, a great platform that, I mean, it costs, I think, like 40 bucks. Um, hooks up right up to my webcam. Um, <laughs> oh, Vanessa, let me put, let me see if I can create an overlay. That's quite a book she wrote up there. For those watching, I would like I would invite you to take a look at the Playing with Fire Omaha.net website and read the about us and then come back into back in a couple of weeks to see the change. I'll, I believe it will be a good example of what Kim is speaking of. She knows an she knows an excellent writer. Yeah, so I've been helping them kind of recraft their about page because it, it does what we've been talking about today is like we need to quit making it so much about how great we are and how we've brought all these amazing bands to Omaha. Well, what is that doing? What's the benefit that their, their fans are going to get from coming to that? You know, they're going to be well more round, uh, more rounded. It's going to make Omaha a better place and, uh, you know, a great place for people to come to. Um, but yeah, thanks for that, Vanessa. That's very, very true. Um, but yeah, if you guys, if you've got any more questions, I would love to take those. Um, you know, unless, unless I don't, if I don't see any more, um, again, oh, okay, so we've got, Chris has got a question. Wondering how I'll be able to use Ecamm on the go. Our live videos will be out in about. Okay, so that does not work with Ecamm because it is strictly for your desktop. However, and I don't know the answer to this yet, but I downloaded an app, oh boy, called, it's that middle one there, it's called Switcher. Uh, S-W-I-T-C-H-E-R, Switcher Go. And if I'm not mistaken, you might be able to schedule it in there. But it was a free app that I was able to download from the um, App Store. And let me put it over in the comments. Um, Switcher Go, that I think, we'll have to, I might have to come back and comment on this later and let you know for sure, but you might be able to do it with that. And that was a free app. Um, but yeah, you're right. It is tough to tell people when you're going to be live. Um, the kind of way around that, especially is if you're out, out and about and on the go, is you can always tell people to tune in um, at that time. You could create an event if you know in advance, and then you could go live in the event. That's the other thing that you could do too. So you are allowed to go live in events that you create on Facebook. And I think that's what your go thing. I think it works with YouTube as well. Um, I, I just downloaded it, so I'm not really sure exactly of what it all does. So, um, you might, that might be, we'll have to check that out and maybe get back to you on that, but that's a great question. Um, yeah, so I, that, that would, that might be an option for you. Um, but yeah, great question. Thank you guys so much. Um, 
if there aren't any more questions, I'm going to hang out and see and let's make sure, see if anybody else has got any. But that was, that was what I had for today. And I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. There was a lot of great, a lot of good questions and discussion. I know even some of it was a little more technical and things like that, but hope oh, Chris has got another question. I found Facebook creator for Facebook stories, but can't figure out how to see who viewed our stories. I see the number and the little eye, but I can't view. I need to, I need to, yeah, you can't view the people. I, I have that app too. Um, I downloaded it while I was at Social Media Marketing World and I have not gotten into it yet. Um, typically, Facebook does tell you how many people have viewed your stories. Um, but I might, I'm gonna have to get back to you on that one because that's a really good question. Like I said, see, I haven't even gone through this yet to <laughs> to set it up because I've been just so busy since I've been back from social media marketing world. But that's a good question. Chris, I'll come back and answer that. Um, I need to get in there and play with that. But I, I, know, I know you can get in there and see it. I know you can for sure do it on Instagram. Um, that should be through the insights. Let's go find out, shall we? Let me go to my desktop here. And let's go to Facebook. We'll make this a little bit bigger. Oh, I want to make sure I'm on the right. Okay. You can see my desktop, right? I want to make sure. Okay, yes, you can. All right. Let me make it a little bit bigger because I know that um, <laughs> I have a 5K iMac, so um, it doesn't always tell me. Let me, okay, so let's see here. If we go into the insights and we go to posts and post types, I don't know if I did any for this. I don't think I did. Uh, did I make a story? Hold on. Um, well, let's let's do the quick thing. How to view Facebook stories insights. And it looks like no one has, good question, no one's answered it yet. So let me, I'm going to get back to you on that one. But I think, I was thinking that somehow you would be able to see it in your posts because it should be through there. I know, yeah, like I know, I know you can see it on Instagram. Um, yeah, I don't think I did a story today on here. I'm going to let you know on that one too. So that's another really great question because <laughs> like it was a great question. So I will find that out too. So I got to find out stories and I got to find out about Switch or Go and see if that those things work for um, scheduling uh, live things. And I don't know if RJ is still on here or not yet, but she would, she might be able to tell you if you can do, I know you can, I think you can schedule them with Ecamm too. Our RJ is uh, way more into, uh, or not Ecamm, BeLive. Um, RJ is more into BeLive right now than I am. So we're, we're both kind of taking notes from each other. So I will let you know on that one though, Chris, that's a great question. So, um, okay. So there aren't any more questions. These have been so fantastic. Um, Thank you again for tuning in to our little live show here. And um, we're going to be doing this every Wednesday. So I'm going to be setting up my next live here um, on Ecamm so that you guys get can sign up right away for the notifications of when I go live. Um, and don't forget, you can get total access to our membership with our free trial. Um, you can sign up at acupofcontent.com slash free trial. No slash live trial because I'm trying to see I'm doing my job of analytics trying to track how many people are going to it from there so you can sign up at a cup of content.com slash live trial and the cool thing is if you sign up today let me pop it up here put the overlay up there there it is if you sign up today you're going to be signing up in time to get on this month's challenge. So that's going to be coming up too. And it's actually going to be working with this whole story idea. So it, this is a great time to try the trial. Um, I know you're probably asking, well, how much is it when the trial is done? It's $30 a month, very affordable, 
that would be one fancy cup of coffee a week if you drink Starbucks like I do. So um, there you go. There you have it. It's a great time to try it out. And I thank you again. I hope you guys can tune in next week. I'll be posting the replay of this here later and then also over on um, YouTube. I'll be putting that in there as well as I'm going to also be having a podcast that I'm going to be starting too. So um, you can find us on iTunes um, in the podcast store. So again, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you guys have a great day. I'm off to Kansas City for a little break and I really need it and I'm very excited about it. So I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks again for tuning in. Take care.